This is the Pirate Hunter, and today we're going to do re two kit reviews, both of a SD dot KFC two Klein's Kit and Craft Rad one thirty fifth Military Miniature Series number twenty nine. German motorcycle tractor, combat crew of three, die cast metal engine by Tamiya. And the other one we're going to do is an SD.KFZ.2, Ketten Crad, early production with infantry Karen 135, 39 to 45 series by Dragon. First one we'll start with is the Dragon kit. I got this down at a place called West Valley Hobbies. Now, West Valley Hobbies is probably an ultimate place to find model kits for armor, artillery, aircraft, cars, anything. They have a complete selection and collection of 148th armor down there. They have a section, one section of 135th armor that is probably 8 feet wide by 8 feet tall. Uh, their prices are pretty reasonable. Uh, really good people to deal with. Okay, this one I got from them. Come on it, your box art with it, and it shows. <laughs> I love the expression on that guy's face. Uh, it shows him and a female. Now, from what I've read on the reviews, I haven't opened the kit, obviously, that there is no female character in there. Price on this was US twenty six ninety nine come to $28 and some odd cents change with tax license either prep contents may have settled during shipping uh, standard end on it uh, gives kit number uh, same thing as on the front small picture this side shows uh, two different variants of it one's painted in panzer gray and one appears to be painted in uh, white winter camouflage the end piece says not suitable for children under three years because of small parts, uh, non-adaptable, not adaptive something. I don't know. In other words, don't let little kids play with it. This is a new kit. This is copyright 2013. Now I don't know if this is just a rebox of an old kit or what on it, but it's 2013 copyright. This side shows. Photo etch, some different photo etch parts. Apparently, it's got DIS tracks on it. And down on this end, it's got uh, the things for your smartphones. It says, What do the experts think? Read their reviews here, official website. This, the finished kit, check out the real deal, official website URL, get a taste of the scrumptious details. Now, I can't imagine chewing on armor and think it's scrumptious. Of course, that's just me. After you've seen my egg plane video, you can understand. On the back here, it has the 135th 39 to 45 series Dragon, uh, Cat and Rad early production with infantry Karen. This shows the CAD drawings on it with the DIS tracks, uh, tools that go on, some of the different, uh, see, newly tooled no lac, no tech light with and tail light, uh, dashboard and driver's compartment, interior carefully reproduced. Uh, shows photo etch on some of this. Engine cover can be assembled, open or closed. Intricate engine reproduced. Uh, spokes, sprockets and idler wheels with correct details. Detailed rolled wheel assembly, accurate front wheel reproduced. Superb internal details including engine and air filter. Uh, radiator housing has sharp detail. Newly produced one-piece DIS tracks. Intricate, intricate gearbox with great details. Seat cushions are injection molded with details. Toex are fully represented. Rear air intake headlight, tail light structure. The other end of the box shows basically the same thing. Let's open it up see what we got. Now we probably grabbed another knife with a dull blade. Oh no, this one actually works. Kind of, sort of. The reason we are doing this out here instead of in the house is because of the remodeling project that I talked about on uh, 
missed the airplane video. I had to escape. This is another, actually, another remodeling project. This is the small one. This is mine. Uh, I've got my 110 volt power roll run in here. I have 12 110 volt outlets in this portion. The other portion I have 110. I have 12 110 outlets in there plus a 220 outlet. I have the air conditioning uh, run into here. I've uh, got everything laid out for the insulation. We're just getting out here and getting started on it. It'll get done. When I do, I'll show you what I've got. So, now let's see what we got here. Molded in gray plastic. Uh, this bag's ripped. We know it must have been. Uh, I don't think it was sealed at the factory very good. Sprues. DIS tracks. Decals. I don't know if you can see them or not. They're pretty small. Whoa, those are small. And some really small photo wedge. So we'll get into this in a little more detail. And uh, directions, it shows standard blue parts that apparently you don't use. Other than, uh, I think, one uh, group of infantry I have, I've never built a dragon kit. So this will be kind of interesting. We'll see where it goes from here. On. We'll start with one that was already partially open. Man, that's... Well, they cut it close when they do the ceiling on it. And this, you can see, apparently those are the wheels for the trailer, trailer parts. I'm guessing that's the tow hook for the trailer. I said, I'm guessing on doing this because I don't have my camera stand set up out here. Framework for it, that's some small framework. That's one that will have to be careful when I take it off there or you could probably very easily break that framework. This is the sprue A on it. There's no real flash on anything. A lot of detail. Pretty good detail on this. The shocks have got a lot of detail. Boy, that is a small framework on that. On this. The tires look good on it. This apparently is drive the drive sprockets and the wheels for the Kettencrad on it. Detail looks pretty good on it. It is attached. The one thing it is attached, the drive sprockets are attached in four places, plus they got two little extra pieces of sprue off of them, which something I'll just have to be careful when I take it off there or you could lose teeth off this. Uh, that drive wheels, all of these are attached in four places on it, which is means there's four chances of uh, breaking it when you cut it off there. I think though once I start down on this end and go that way or that way, it'll make it easier to do it. It'll take some of the tension and the stress off of it when I do it. Um, detail on it looks fairly sharp on these. Minimal flash, a little tiny bit, but not enough to really ride home and bother your mother about or anything like that. Handles on it look pretty, boy they're small. One thing though I said is I don't like four attach points. They're pretty thin though, pretty thin attach points, so we'll see on it how it looks. And this is the other sprue, same way. I have two sprues of it. Yeah, both B sprues on it. I haven't, like I said, I haven't looked at the directions, I just opened it up. Looks pretty good. Like I said, the only thing is my concern is the four attach points on it. Open this one up. Sure we will. You know, if I was smart, I'd just quit on this video right now and just start over again, but I'm not. Alright, we'll make another attempt at this. A 
Yay. This, I'm guessing, I don't know what this is. I think this is the light assembly on it, Sprue D. I don't know if that's the air, I think that might be the air cleaner assembly on it. I don't know, I'll have to look at it. I'm not a, I'm not an expert on Ketten Crads, believe me, on this. Looks good, the detail looks good on it. Uh, no ejection pin marks. That is one really tiny little part right there. On this, I don't, I said, I think that's for a light assembly. Looks good. This is, apparently this is the parts for the front of the, I don't know what it's for. There's the front tire for the Cat and Crat itself. It's a one-piece tire, one-piece tire and rim. And it's got, I don't know if you can see it or not, but right there is the detail for the valve stem on it. And it's got a really good tread pattern on it, but it is attached in three places, so it'll have to be a little bit of re-etching on the uh, tire tread pattern. Another set of drive sprockets. Something is missing out of the center of this. I don't know, actually, unless that's just blank on it. Oh, it says there was parts there. Hmm, that's interesting. So we'll figure it out when we look at the directions here. Rest of the parts on it, trailer hitch, looks like suspension parts, the axe, the shovel, front suspension parts, the driver, this driver's head's gone, oh well, we'll find it, there's his hat, two arms, two legs, oh there it is, so, looks pretty good, the detail's pretty sharp on him. Looks good. Pretty good looking kit there. And this is the parts for the trailer. Um, trailer. There's the engine trans. Pretty good amount of detail on the engine. Could be detailed out pretty good. Fenders, the body, sides of the tractor unit itself. On it, no real flash on this. None. It looks pretty good. A little tiny bit there, but not, like I said, not enough to ride home and bother your mother about. That's the seat, rear seat. And pretty bad, not bad. It's got, I don't know if you can see it on this out here. The lighting's really bad. I haven't got the lights in or anything else yet. Uh, it's got the indentations in the seat for, uh, like somebody's been setting on it, or it's just getting wore in, things like that. And I under, from what I understand when I read a kit review on this, that this can be modeled in either the new or the early. And, or I'm sorry, new or early. The early or a later production, and it depends on how some of the framework is. This apparently framework right here determines whether it's a newer or an older version, or later version, I'm sorry, newer or later version is this portion right down in here where this is full. That, from what I read one review, is what makes the determination on it. I don't know, I'll have to do some more research on this. But some of it, like I said, it looks pretty good. A little tiny bits of uh, flash, nothing major on it. And our photo etch. We don't want to get out of there, obviously. Let's we'll do it this way, see if you can see it. It's got a couple of grills and some uh, smaller pieces. I don't... Come on. Yeah. That's just... Well, so, we'll just call it good on that. Got some little... It's a thin, real thin, flexible fret of uh, 
photo etch on it. Pretty shiny. And you can see through the holes on it. Looks good. Well, that's some good detail on that. Last two parts here on this one. We got the decals and I just cut the bag open. Alright, fine. You want to cooperate? I've got, had to go ahead and have some more tests on the nerves. My hands don't work good because of nerve damage in this, so it's really tough for me to open small little bags like that. So, and this is our decals for the Cat and Crowd, and I guess the trailer. There, uh, it's a bunch of different numbers and letters on it, so I can't tell really. Like I said the lighting out here is pretty poor. Uh, I haven't got the new lighting in. But it's all sorts of different numbers, uh, W, L, W, H, uh, S, S. Uh, it's got the number plate on it and the two side pieces for the number plate that goes on the front fender. So apparently you can make a combination of uh, different organizations or units by using these individual numbers. They're rough. I can feel them. They're kind of rough and a little glossy, but not bad. And boy, they are right around those uh, the crosses. They're right around that. They're right around the edge on everything on this. Pretty good looking set of decals on it. Take that back closed while we're at it, cutting things open. Let's cut this open. You can see the detail on it or not. But this is the photo etch that's out of it. It's shiny. It's got a lot of small photo etch. Of course, this isn't a very big kit either. Looks good. Real sharp. Uh, not what I call really heavy or really light. It's, it's fairly a little bit heavy on one end, but it looks good. On it. Get the directions here. Here where it shows the, the blue pieces you don't use. And this shows it open, so whatever it was. Now, I don't know. I think they make a version of this. Dragon makes a ver kit out of this that uh, uses, that has a 3.7 centimeter artillery, uh, anti-tank gun with it. Might, might be where this is from on it. And some of this might be parts for that and I tank gun also. So it shows some pieces that are gone here. As is thanks to Tom Cockle and Gary Edmondson as technical consultants on it. Standard fold out things. Uh, standard doesn't have any reel that I found. Uh, any information about it. Doesn't look like it. No. Nope. So do my own research. It says Dragon is always at the forefront of utilizing new technology and material to for the development of its various product lines. Such innovation is geared to reduce the modeler's construction time and effort, but at the same time brings high detail to the end product. Dragon is proud to introduce Dragon Styrene 100, a crossbreed that has the advantage of both polystyrene and PVC vinyl developed and, and formulated for the Dragon or by the Dragon R&D team. See it shows right here it says it allows filling, cutting, sanding and polishing. Easy to get rid of parting lines by modeling thinner and it can be glued using normal modeling liquid cement. So I don't know here. This is kind of interesting on this one. I haven't run across this before where it says easy to get rid of parting line parting lines by modeling thinner. Um, that'll be something that I'll have to look at here as I go ahead and do this. It's got a whole bunch of different instructions up on the top. 
uh, Japanese, and German, English, um, Spanish, I think, French, I don't know. It says, caution when you use glue or paint, do not use near a naked flame, and, oh yeah, and use it in a well-ventilated room, symbols such as this little blue number one, refer to the color number of GSI Creos Corpse, Mr. Color. Glue and paint are not included. When you take parts off the sprue, off the runner frame, use modeling scissors on, on standard stuff. Okay, here's the paint call out here. And it's GSI Creos Corp, Aqueous Hobby Color, GSI Creos Corp, Mr. Color, Model Master Color. Calls it out in Japanese, uh, different numbers. Calls flat white, flat black, steel, field gray, wood, and with a little one for an asterisk. Wood brown gives them in the different languages on it. That's the only colors it calls out for it. Here, this step one on it. Now, this is where it shows cutting this out. Now, the review I read, and I can't remember who did it, and I apologize to him for that if he ever sees this video. He was talking about cutting this out, and that's what makes the difference between the early version and the late version. But I'll have to do the research on it to find out, because there's nothing on here that explains anything like that. It's got a double set of arrows, and it shows this, so I guess you cut it out or something like that. I don't know. It shows the axe going on here, uh, different the assembly of the sprockets, wheels. Page Second page shows 3, 4, and 5. Again, it shows on the other side cutting that out and putting the wheels sprockets. This shows the engine assembly on it with the transmission and I'm guessing the seat. Uh, floor pan assembly, pedal assembly. Shows putting the engine all together, this then to that. Again, shows the side assembly on it here. Just over here. Shows putting the side assembly on the floor pan on it with the engine trans. Shows the dash assembly going on here. Controls. Shows shift lever. How's my day going? Fun. Shows the photo etch. All the MA numbers are your photo etch from what I looked at that. Shows the step six here. Putting the engine cover all in on it. with, And it shows cutting that out. And I guess you're cutting that out and putting the photo etch in. Or you're putting the photo etch over it. I don't know. I'll have to go through this a little bit more and look at this. The rear seat construction on it. The front wheel construction on it, which is not bad. It, um, your front suspension is two parts, so it goes in and sets the wheel. So you have the clearance gap up underneath the fender assembly on it, which looks pretty good, really. Shows the track assemblies. Shows installing the tracks and the front wheel assembly on it. Shows the tra assembling the trailer putting that little tiny framework down around the top shows uh, trailer hitch assembly on it shows building the trailer back page shows unidentified unit 1941 and that's in a panzer gray and this is an unidentified unit 1941 I guess in winter camouflage white. There is nothing on this. It gives a correct method for installing decals, but there's really nothing that explains why you cut some of this stuff out. There's no... Oh, wait a minute. There's a bunch more things up on top. Do not cement. Oh, right there explains what you're supposed to do with each one of these on the 
different call-outs that it's got on it. Like I said out here the light is really poor so I'm not able to do as good a review as I'd like to on this. So There it is. Looks like a pretty good kit. Uh, not a whole lot of parts on it. Um, very minimal flash. No flash at all actually in most places. A uh, small amount of uh, PE. Apparently you can build uh, whatever you want for whatever unit because it gives you um, the unidentified units thing instead of calling them out. So that is why the decal sheet on this has all the different, I don't know if we'll focus there, has all the different letters and numbers on it and the plaques for them to go on. Now, I can't really tell. I think those, though, are individual numbers on it. And if they are that, uh, I can't tell. If they are, that's really going to be interesting trying to get that on there unless you have a unit that is numbered WH12345678900. So apparently you will have to cut these apart, put them on there, or find out or get an aftermarket set that are small that would have the numbers that you wanted on it. What I'll do is when I get to this I will take and do the research for a unit. This one will be used in a Normandy diorama type setup. So I will find out what unit is was in Normandy at the time and that is the markings that I will use on it. So let's get on to our other one here. And the other one here is kind of an interesting story on it. I have all sorts of interesting stories. When I did my original Cheap Seat series that ended up on my other channel, I was buying these kits that are called builder's kits. And usually what they are, you get them for a couple of bucks, five bucks, something like that, a couple dollars shipping, that are usually missing parts or they're missing decals, or they're missing instructions, things like that. Well, this come in with a builder's kit. I bought this builder's kit, had all these figures, had different sorts of stuff, had all this, had all that. Well, when I got it, this was in there. I thought, okay. So this is an old Tamiya kit, and I don't know when it was manufactured. I'll have to look in there and see if it's marked on one of the sprues. But this calls 135th Military Miniature Series number 29, German Motorcycle Tractor, Combat Crew of 3, Diecast Metal Engine. Well, when I opened it, when I got it here, it was obviously opened. When I got it here, there was no figures in it and no directions, instructions. So I figured, oh well, I'll figure it out as I go. Well, I ended up buying this uh, Dragon Kit. This will get used in a North Africa type diorama, I think. So I wasn't too worried about a lot of detail on this because of the way it'll look, where the way it's used. So let's open up and look at what we got here. Okay, we'll look at the box. It says about the Kenton Craft Rad. It says during World War II, Germany produced many half tracks which were widely utilized in varied activities such as troop and supply transport, cannon towing, etc. The smallest of these was the Kenton Craft. Its lightweight made it uh, possible to drop it and it wasn't dropped from planes with paratroopers. It was designed to go into a Junkers 52, but it wasn't designed to be dropped by parach uh, paratroopers, with, by parachute. 1941, the Kenton craft was used in the Battle of Crete Island. Its superior off-road efficiency and nimble ability gave birth to special capabilities along the eastern front, and when equipped with sidecar or truck, its versatility was even greater. Now, I've never seen a picture of one. I'm not saying they weren't used that way. I'd done a lot of reading about these and looked a lot about these. But i never seen one with a sidecar. Now, if you could find a side, one, a picture of one with a sidecar and scratch build a sidecar, that would be quite interesting on this. Normally, what they were used, they had the trailer to haul ammunition. Uh, they did a lot of cable laying for communications is what the most common usage that I've found pictures of. Some... Uh, 
other usage, but most of that's what I found on it. So the end of the box is the same as the front picture. This side shows 88 millimeter gun flak 3637 Russian field car. I got one of those in another builder's kit and a Hanomag SDKFZ251. So you open it up and as I said there's no directions in there. No decals, things like that. Now this engine a trans is a fairly fairly well kind of detailed metal engine. It's kind of heavy. Uh, it says die cast metal engine uh, to me a plastic model company. So if you were modeling one of these that had the uh, you're going to do it with the hood open that's not too bad a setup on it. It really isn't. It doesn't look too bad. These are Typical to me, it closed with staples. I don't know if they got it out of it or what. Now, this is kind of interesting. Now, I said in the box of other stuff I got that this come with, I found the characters that look like the individuals, the figures that are on the front of this box. So, okay, that's no big thing. Well, this is kind of interesting on this Tamiya because this track assembly, if you look at it, is a one-piece track assembly with three of the wheels and three of the road wheels and the pulley for the drive sprocket on it. And they're all, you know, solid one piece. Now, you, I looked at uh, one that Panzerman Bunker's Bill did where he did some springs on an M113. They took and he got down in and he scribed down in there on it, on the spring. So it looked pretty good. Would that help on this? Uh, I don't know. Well, like I said, for what this is being used for, I'm not really too concerned. But this come with another trailer on it. The suspension is a little bit little bit different than what was is on the Dragon kit and this does not have the separate front fender and wheel. You can see where the holes are on this to plug in to put the front suspension on to hold it in there. But this will work for what I'm going to use it for. Will I take and get in there and cut that front fender loose? Yeah, probably. So, but I don't know. We'll see how it looks on it. It's uh, got another trailer. There's the front handlebars for it. Different kind of tow hook than the other setup. On it, it comes with three jerry cans. Uh, blanket roll on it. It's not too bad looking. Different style headlight than the other kit. It's got some parts here. But I don't quite know what they are. I might get online see if I find a copy of the instructions. If not, I will just swag it on it. Then this sprue here is the build for the Cat and Craft Rad itself. Some of the details for it. The shift levers. It had two shift levers, I guess, for high and low and uh, the regular transmission. Dash assembly. You could drive away dry uh, brush that probably come out looking fairly good but all things considered this is the seat is definitely not the quality of like the dragon seat but this is a much older kit in fact it was made in USA 1979 so it's quite an old kit so that's kind of standard but you notice this is open on these or on the other one it's closed so I don't know if this is an early kit an old kit or not this is just something I picked up to use in a diorama, which will get used in one, and hopefully it'll come out fairly good. Once I get these remodeling projects done, and I can go do something as far as modeling, other than an occasional build video, or an eggplant build video. So, there we are on this. For what I'm going to use it for, yeah, it'll work good. I don't have to worry about putting figures on it, characters on it, or anything else. And I've got a, now got a spare trailer to use with uh, some other item, another project that I'm doing. Okay, final 
uh, opinion on it. I think the Dragon Kit's a pretty good kit. It really is. It has got a lot of detail on it. It has got uh, minimal flash. You have the option of building it either in an early or late production, from what I understand, where it does not give any specific uh, call-outs as far as paint. You could paint it about any way you wanted for whatever area you wanted to use it in. Now, I know they were used in North Africa up through Tunisia in 1943, and one uh, thing I found on the Internet about the Ketten Craft Rads uh, had a really interesting camouflage scheme that was used in the Tunisian area. So if you wanted to do some really interesting uh, paint scheme on it, you could do it in the Tunisian time frame. Yeah, is it worth what I paid for it? Under 30 Yeah, that's a pretty good buy on that kit. It's good overall kit. Now, the old Tamiya, well, that was, at the time in 1979, that was pretty high-tech stuff back then. So, for what I'm going to use it for, yeah, it'll work good. In my spares, I've got other characters that are figures that I can use with it if I want, but this will actually be used with the other figures that I did the kit review on that I'm going to try to get all my old videos back reloaded onto YouTube. So, as always, oh, one last thing here, and I'll do more of a review on it in the future here. I did, the first video that I reposted back on was of the Airfix 132nd, 135th Desert Outpost, Midnight at the Oasis, Rock the Casbah kind of thing. Well, so I stuck it together here. And this is what it looks like when it sticks together. Now, I did a little bit of trimming and fitting on it. You had to, just to get it to fit. But it's not, you know, other than it's... The size isn't bad on it. It's other than just the wall thicknesses on it. Now, I'm not a rivet counter, but that's a mighty thin brick, so all i got to say. If it's 132nd, you figure one inch thick walls would be 32 inches thick. So, you go about 13, 30 seconds, something like that. Give you a decent sized wall, about 13 inches, 12, 13 inches wide, thick wall, which would be fine. As you can see, when I did the review on it, when I talked about the way some of this stuff was on it, and about what you would find out in an actual combat situation. Now, this is my control piece. Now, you might want to call it that. It comes from days of building prototypes in this. This I'm going to use as my control. Okay, So we'll go into this a lot more when I get going. So what I did, because I'm going to change the way I want it done, this is just a real quick modification to it. You can see where I've done all my layouts on the inside of the roof looking down. You can say why are your walls so high? Because see I can put them in here. I haven't trimmed them yet. Both sides has all the layouts of my walls. Now when I do this then instead of cutting that up and say whoops I don't want to do that I can go in here and erase this and I can say okay I'm going to move the door here I want to move a window here or something like that. This is an outdoors area that they had. Uh, will I shorten this up? Possibly. Will I narrow it up? Probably. So it will come out slightly different. But this is my control and as I said by using the foam board I got watching uh, the Terrain Tutor and this is what they do a lot of their gaming stuff with is the foam board. So what I did is with a foam board instead of gluing it they use just T-pins when they're doing a lot of this stuff to see how it fits which works a lot better for me because if I cut something wrong, I want to change something, I can add a piece with the T-pins, I can hold it all together with them. If I want to take this off and say, whoa, wait a minute, I'm going to erase this and I'm going to redo this, I can just pull the pins, take it off, change it, stick it right back on. I don't have to wait for glue, I don't have to cut glue, things like that. I'll go into a lot more detail on that in the future. So there we are. Hopefully this was able to be seen because, like I said, I'm doing it out here without my um, regular camera stand. As always, this is the Pirate Hunter, and according to the great Jerry Springer, take care of yourself and each other. And I have some videos of a talk I did about my Vietnam experiences for Salt Lake City Library. 
hopefully I can get them posted on but we had problems with the camera doing it so we lost some of it and normally I don't get on a soapbox I do a little bit about trolls anymore but now I'm going to get on a little bit of a soapbox if you are a veteran or you know a veteran or you are anybody whether you're a teenager or 80 years old and you're thinking of harming yourself or somebody else don't do it make that phone call do whatever you need to get the help I got tired of losing friends that didn't make the phone call and family members that didn't make it so like I said there's my soapbox for this one. this is the pirate hunter and we will be back again in the future and as far as our attitude is the trolls can go take well never mind what they can go do but we're done with the trolls bothering us have a nice day better tomorrow and talk to you later